will allow me to tell you for sure. I'm no Abraham Lincoln pundit. I'm not like those uh, scholars uh, of all time. Who comes to mind? Galbraith, Herodotus, you know? uh, my aunt Jessie, who lived next door to me when I was a kid. She was pretty up on events. Well, or was it Aunt Sophie? I can't remember. Well, anyways. I'm going to do a reading from Selected Speeches, Messages, and Letters, edited by T. Harry Williams. Hold off on that. That's the big feature on the Hank Wiener Band on Lincoln, number two. The Hank Wiener Band podcast? I'm just a little old guy uh, on YouTube sharing his old ideas. I did happen to hang out one night with Aristotle. That was a dream. And Franz Kafka. I hung out with Franz. That was a dream, too. Of course, he had a dream when he was uh, saying, Ich war in größer Verlegenheit an der dringende Reise stand mir bevor. That was, I was in great perplexity. A great journey stood before me. Something like that. That's in uh, Ein Lattat's uh, uh, Kafka's uh, short story, A Country Doctor. Uh, I'm getting off the trip. What was that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got a... Uh, uh-oh. There's a uh, thunderstorm warning. Well, that, uh, that's all that that's doing. Uh, sorry about that. That's the, uh, that's the circumstantial world coming in, like when Joyce was right in Finnegan's Wake, and there was a knock at the door. Beckett was taking dictation. Uh, uh, Joyce had a bad vision. And uh, I was knocking at the door, and while Joyce was reciting from Finnegan's Wake, I'm not going to get into that river run past Eve and Adams, uh, there was a knock at the door, and Joyce said, Come in. And Beckett wrote it down, and when he reread it, Joyce said, Leave it in. It's the circumstantial world. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, anyways, oh, let me play the. Uh, Old to the Confederate dead. Gee, so many died. Uh, but it, and the Union dead uh, at Gettysburg. And getting right into the reading, as always, I select these readings because it pertains to present times. Well, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln was a great writer. Great writer. I mean, you're thinking, uh, Getty, well, Lincoln, four score and seven years, everybody, that's Lincoln for everybody. You know, in the uh, 20 minutes uh, it took him and... Uh, Nobody really paid attention. Well, I wasn't there at Gettysburg, but as I said, I'm not a Lincoln scholar. I'm just an average citizen, likes to read and share ideas, like a book club thing. Call it the Hank Winterband Podcast. I don't care. Call it whatever. Call it a junta. Call it a powwow. Call it uh, a couple of Zen monks sitting under the bow tree, uh, passing a sandwich. Well, I'm at a point now. I can't even figure out what goes in the ham and cheese sandwich. I'm not working on that. I might experiment with that a little later. But anyways, quote, Slavery 
is founded in the selfishness of man's nature. Opposition to it in his love of justice. These principles are an, are an eternal antagonism, and when brought into collusion, collision, so fiercely as slavery extension brings them, shocks and throes and convulsions must ceaselessly follow. Nice turn of phrase there. Repeal the Missouri Compromise. Repeal all compromises. Repeal the Declaration of Independence. Repeal all past history. You will still cannot repeal human nature. It still will be the abundance of man's heart that slavery extension is wrong. And out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth will continue to speak. Now, uh, slavery, you know, we, everybody has seen movies of the slaves being taken uh, on ships uh, from Africa to the east coast of America. And, uh, but I'm, uh, but uh, I'm asking you to extend the idea of slavery. Slavery of the mind. There's a slavery of the mind that uh, the modern forces, whoever they are in charge, are shaping humanity. And, and by extension, it's culture. There's a shaping going on here. Now, that might come out a little more clearly with AI, artificial intelligence but you can feel that there's a force controlling it. You may disagree with that. You might just think everybody's just doing like, uh, like Kino balls, just uh, molecules just jumping around by chance. Uh, that's your opinion. But I feel uh, this force and extension of slavery in uh, Lincoln at every turn has what I'm calling now a Lincolnian phrase, in other words, thought like and expressed like our great president, Abraham Lincoln. As some Indians used to say, Yalta hey, or ho, or, uh, or with the morning sunrise ceremony. But that's a whole other 